Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I've got my snow going on outside, so you know I'm happy. Um, not everybody likes my snow. I was um, driving my son to the doctor, and I'm like, look at that snow, isn't that pretty? He's like, what is wrong with you? It's supposed to be spring. I'm like, I know, we got snow, and I love it, and I love it. I love my snow. So anyway, um, in the last two days, I have been doing my best to kind of show the backstory of the uh, Michelle shitstorm that has hit Facebook, the second phase of the pandemic, if you will, of the Michelle. And last night, I had said that I didn't want to show um, the picture of, um, sorry, this is on my keyboard. I didn't want to show the video of the veteran. Um, and I was working with um, Penelope Lane's video so that because she's got all of the graphics and all of the backstory that you can see. And I'm trying to lead everybody over there to her channel so that she can get um, the views for her work that she did. She did all the legwork in the beginning. If anybody would have just looked over there and realized she's a big fat liar, not given in to her, maybe this wouldn't have happened, but it happened because people saw her sitting in a house thinking, oh, you know, she's just down on her luck. Well, I want to um, do a little bit more to show how Michelle prioritizes people in her life and how she shows her love. So I posted on my community page the pictures of her ex-husband's neck and side of his face where she had abused him by throwing he went outside and he was pouring concrete to fix the sump pump because he's taking care of the house. Well, she was all drunk and everything and went out and saw the cement and then thought, <laughs> how funny to go and put it all in um, Etienne's head and hair and um, everything. So you can see Etienne trying to pull the concrete off of his skin and his hair, but it's just in there and you can see it's, you know, deeply irritated his skin. And it's, it's really disgusting that, um, a supposed adult, uh, a mother, um, wife of veteran would act that way. Um, and in it, she's like telling him to look at her, look at her, look at her. And he won't even look at her cause he's so disgusted. He's been humiliated, exploited, shamed. So then in the next video, um, the timeline goes where he filed for divorce. He left her. He filed for divorce. And then, oh, what do you know? She was backed in a corner. She got, you know, dumped. So she faked a stroke. Now, there are some arguments for that she had a stroke, arguments against a stroke. She tried to pull that she had a stroke when people tried to shut down her channel. And she completely lied about that stroke. So any truth about the stroke is up in the air. When she left her phone open for everybody to hear her live streaming because she thought she was a hot shot, you know, having her phone streaming because the doctors, medical personnel, security all told her to put her phone down. You're in the hospital because they expect you to be a responsible adult and a part of your own healing. That means that if you are hooked up to IVs because you have an infection, your body needs rest. You need to put down the phone, rest, be a part of letting your body heal. But no, she had to be on the phone saying that she needed to be on there so that people could give her money because she didn't know how she was going to pay for the hospital bill and how she was going to pay for her prescription. So she needed to be on the phone. She just had to, to raise money. And people that are that stupid to believe that. So they start sending her money, gift cards, sending her food, she was talking about these apples that got sent to her sushi, roses and everything. And anybody who questions it, she says they're jealous. Well, fuck yeah, I am jealous. So you know what I did? I went and I went and bought my own roses. I went and bought some really pretty ones. And I got them in almost the same color because I was jealous. I was a jealous little bitch about it. So I went and got my own flowers because I didn't need to go and pretend to be sick or, or have anybody else do anything for me. I put my ass in the car, drove it to the store and bought myself those flowers and then put them in a nice vase. Took some pretty pictures of them too. Anywho, if you see the red marks and stuff on, e on ETN, her husband, ex-husband's um, 
neck and back, it's it will disgust you. And you heard how she was laughing so hard she couldn't breathe at, at how funny that was. Well, if the if the situation was reversed and he was like, oh, <laughs> here's some cement, your hair and everything, and she was mad and trying to get it out, you can damn bet she would have called the cops on him, had him arrested, had him charged with assault, and went and told everybody because she has these stories of abuse with absolutely zero proof. She has these stories that he threw boiling water on her. She had all these extensive burns and all this. So he filed from divorce to get the fuck away from her. But then, of course, she had a stroke. And what kind of a husband would he be if he left his ailing wife who had a stroke, couldn't do anything for herself, couldn't care for herself in any way, needing all this help, help, I have to have somebody to help me. Uh, sound familiar? It's what she's doing right now. Okay. All of the health problems that are going on are brought on by her. If she wants to get better, she needs to not smoke two packs a day, not drink excessively and take medication that is not necessary nor prescribed actively for her. She may have had an old prescription for Xanax. As she said, she had to have a short-term um, prescription of Xanax for her um, nurse for her divorce. That's a short-term thing. How is she refilling them? She's refilling them because people are giving her money, gift cards, and gifts, in which she is selling to go and put more Xanax in that prescription bottle. She brought that prescription bottle to with her to the hospital and was taking those drugs, saying, oh, I just had to bring my at-home drugs because they don't give them to me in the hospital. That's because the hospital will be sure of what you are prescribed. If you are currently prescribed a medication, it will be given to you in the hospital. You are not to take any at-home drug supplements or anything else, okay? So... She's not a victim of anything other than her own addiction, and she will not get sober, and this has nothing to do with her baby that had SIDS. She was deep in addiction long before that. I'm getting a lot of feedback that is telling me that she she was addicted long before that. She was a big F up from the word go, okay? It sounds like she was raised by her grandmother, um, and she had her children pretty much raised by that grandmother as well. She was never um, that uh, picture-perfect mom, if you will. Now, so Etienne filed for divorce. He had to come back, take care of her in full. So she pulled the little, I'm a baby. I, I can't even, you know, change my own diaper. You've got to help me. I can't do anything. So that then it would create the dependency. So, so he felt that he could not leave her again. But then soon enough, she started her crap again. And um, he wanted to leave her and she started pouring it on thick and begging him not to leave because she couldn't do this. She couldn't do that. And I found this video that's public out there, but I will still say I'm using it for fair use for purposes of critique, new information, new um, perspective, new views um, to expose that I am referring to section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976 that affords for fair use for education, commentary, research, critique um, to teach. Uh, and I'm not doing this for a profit. I am not yet monetized. I have not ever made one cent off of anything that I have done to expose the truth and the backstory to those stories and those people that you wonder about in the headlines and shitstorms such as these. So I am going to play you a recording of the video so that you can hear what she did for, for ETN for their anniversary. Keep in mind, this is after she has accused him of all of this domestic abuse, okay? That and that he has already tried to leave her, and this is this is bef so and remember, I know that domestic abuse does not happen every single day. That there are people who look happy, and you can't see the domestic violence. As a survivor of domestic violence myself, and of witnessing it as a young child, I know that better than ever. But it has been confirmed, and she has admitted to making up the stories about domestic abuse. She will brag that, that ETN just loves her and is so in love with her and, and he'll do anything she says. All she has to do is pick up the phone and he'll give her money. Does that sound like an abuser? When she was chasing him around, does that sound like an abuser? So I'm going to play this now. And this, so the scenario is, is that he's sitting on the couch and she is giving him um, his birthday present that she put in like a binder and she's filming him. Because she wants a reaction. He doesn't want to be filmed. Probably the best gift you could give him is to get off 
off of the camera, but she wanted it filmed so that she could show that she did all of this for him. Okay. Now this is what she's doing for her man. And then I'm going to show you how she, um, what she does for her uh, son in a little bit. So hold on, here we go. So he's sitting there and we begin with our first card. The cover. The first card I ever gave you. I also remember you driving to base and me driving over. Okay, so she's she made this thing and um, it was talking about the first card that she ever gave them and about their love and how it began and that when she dropped him back off at base and she was leaving on the highway, she was crying um, after they had had that weekend that had all of that, this, that, and the, ooh, damn. So, you know, um, must have been just amazing, amazing sex because, you know, she's a professional. Um, and so... He's he's reading this and he's okay to this point. You know, he's he's still looking down and dejected, like, oh God, what is this? He doesn't want to be any part of this, but he's he's going along with it and he's going through this of what she's um given him in this binder. He's kind of reading it off. I loved you, but we weren't together long. So I made your V Day card. You still have it. So she says, um, you know, first off, Etienne, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for marrying me. Putting up with my early shenanigans. I want to thank you for putting up with my early shenanigans. Faith in me and being my caregiver stroke. Right. And for being my caregiver after my stroke. So she's thanking him for all of the things that he's done. And remember, the first time that the divorce was filed was because she was accusing him of all of the severe domestic abuse, um, of throwing boiling water on her, all of these things, you know, basically keeping her as a prisoner, et cetera, et cetera. Thanking him for taking care of her after she had her stroke, being her caregiver. Anniversary, I wanted to show you how much you were appreciated and loved. So um, she's thanking him for being so supportive and never giving up on her. I show the guy that gives so unselfishly on himself and doesn't want anything. Let me think about what ATN. You can tell that Michelle can't even, you know, form a sentence. The poor guy is trying to, you know, look at her writing and trying to figure out what she's trying to say. But in there, she says, you know, what did what does she give a guy who who gives uns, gives so unselfishly, just gives to her and never spends a, a dime on himself? Um, this is the big abuser, you know. My gift to you is. So she's giving him the gift of peace and quiet. No house, no wife, and no dogs for a weekend. <laughs> so she had a very, very um, uh, wonderful revelation to, or to really see that give this man a weekend off of her bullshit. It's the best, best present she could give him for their anniversary. Like, that is just, that was insightful. Much needed solitude you deserve. TL birthday weekend fest for you. Way more deserved. If you flip through the pages, you will see why I've been so secret. Single sacrifice you ever made for us. Happy birthday. So the beginning of your present starts off at the airport. Parts Atlanta arrives Fort Lauderdale. Departs Fort Lauderdale. It's the weekend of Lighter Than Life. So it, she's sacrificing her weekend of louder than life. I don't know what that is. Um, she's a real uh, rock star stalker. And she feels that she's very much in with the bands. And um, she spends a lot of money to go and get these great pictures. She's got a great picture of her, I think, with Godsmack. 
um, you know, it's it's that you pay that five hundred dollars that they're going to donate. You pay this whatever to get that full picture with them. You know, it's her. They're not like looking at her like, oh, we want you like she likes everybody to imagine. Well, you know, obviously need some transportation. So he's still opening up and trying to see this binder of what she's um, set up for him. She set up this whole weekend um, of him away. And I don't, I don't know if this is saying that she's going still to that rock concert, litter, whatever, litter, litter than life. I don't know what. But anyway, she's miraculously going to be able to take care of herself like a big girl for a whole weekend, sending him um, at the airport She's got the airline tickets and everything. Um, so it's it's detailing all that she gave him in this. So he can, um, she set it up so that he can get the airline tickets. Um, he can get the car rental. Um, uh, and then you'll need a place. Ocean Point's key. <laughs> Side in. It was 90 bucks a night. But anyway, um, so, um, he's, he's like laughing, you know, doing the Michelle laugh because it's an expensive place that she checked him into. Whereas he's going, I could have just stayed here for 93 a night, but no, because keep in mind here, wink, wink, this is what she has given him. Right. And oh, she's so broke. Well, she doesn't work. She receives full disability. So maybe with her disability checks, she's stacked them up and paid for some of this. Or it's his money that she's spending as always. And he bought himself this, but she's just telling him what what he all spent on himself. Uh, four nights, one room. Wow, Ocean Point. Two bars, one restaurant. Wow. Or to keep key scuba diving deals. He can't read her writing. He's like going back and forth on this thing. Like what in the shit? He can't read what she's written. It's just like she, she did her best to um, create this binder explaining what she did. And he's like, I have really no idea what this says. Six two tank trips. Six two tank trips. Two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Two tank dives. This is nothing. But I went ahead and renewed your patty membership and was supposed to be mailed a new house. And the new car didn't I want you to have your new card attached to this page. This is second, so pretend your card is attached. That, that's only if I'm paying dude. All of your trips for your doc are already paid for. Your tips. I want you to have one of the best dress free trips. Yes, you did fucking awesome. So she went through, she um, made sure that his, because um, like I was looking into getting my dive certificate when I was in Australia and um, I didn't because of 9-11 and everything else where I went down to Australia, spent about a week and wanted to get the F out. I was supposed to be there for four weeks, but I was going to get my dive certificate there as well. So um Probably he did the same. He probably got his dive certificate. He's a master diver. I was just going to get my basic diving certificate. Um, so she, you know, checked on that, made sure that he didn't need recertification, found that he had not paid his dues to keep his license for the past three years, updated all of those dues, just did everything for him in this binder. And, you know, she's trying to write down what it is. He can't explain it. He can't read it. But, you know, she put all of this in because she loved him. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's about a 15 minute drive from Key Largo. Same Key Largo? Yes. That's all right. You've not done up on your present. Sweetness. How long is this? Four days. Okay. So I got He said that he would hook you up with that. Yeah, Abby, you're not done with your presence. Not down with your presence. Looks like a first grader wrapped this box. Bottom a nice, nice underwater camera. Yeah, wow. There's more. Once again, it looks like a, a first grader wrapped this box and has all this tape around it and everything. And he's trying to do it. So to this point, um, she bought him a, what, four day, three night, whatever, um, hotel getaway um, away from her. So he can go to the airport, fly. This, she bought his airlines. She paid for the hotel, which um, sounds like it's a very top notch one, um, paid for his rental car. Paid for him to do six dives a day with two tanks, so like two, 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 so three times a day for how many days or whatever. Updated his license. Um, she stated stated that the hotel has uh, two bars, one restaurant, so he can eat while he is there. Stick and Your mask. So, um, some more accessories for that and that camera. I can't imagine how much that camera cost. So she put this all in and like I say, it's probably his money. Um, I don't know if they were on a thing where, you know, he gives her an allowance or if, um, cause she says she has a hundred thousand, you know, um, from her, um, hooker days or whatever. And I don't know how much from the government she gets. She says that she was an insurance ad adjuster for the storms and whatever. So people think that she's an insurance adjuster. She has never worked that in any capacity. She went to a class to get a certification to do that. She has never worked in that line of work ever. She may have went to where they send off to for the further certification, but she has never done that. She's been on Full disability for, I think she said 20 years, um, for her mental disability. Um, she was saying it was because of the uh, the shock of having her child um, pass from SIDS. That's not true. She's also said that it's from um, her borderline personality disorder, which, which probably most likely is true. That's an auto-qualifier um, borderline uh, 
disorder, borderline personality disorder is highly resistant to treatment. Um, very, very difficult to work with. Um, very difficult for them to maintain employment. Um, I'm not saying that if you have borderline personality disorder that you are one or the other. It affects everybody differently. It's on a spectrum just as autism is. Um, but for her, it does seem that um, it affects her quite deeply. She also has the comorbidity that we can all see with um, her addictions and her just being a general overall asshole. Um, so, I mean, we can estimate she probably dropped seven to $10,000 on this vacation for him, which if he gave her access to the savings and money and whatever, he paid for it, obviously, because she does not work. And despite the fact she said she was a stunt double and everything else, there's no credits on IMDb with any of the names and aliases and nicknames that she um, uses. So, um... There's no money to show that she actually did. So he's probably going, great, here's my money. Um, but this is, again, after the stroke. And this is all from before where she said that, you know, he did this. He was this horrible abuser, all of that, all that. Well, why would you put all that together to somebody who was such a horrible abuser who burned you with boiled water and a boiling water and all that stuff? And oh, hmm. We dog sitting for lighter than life. Honey. Now I feel bad. Why? Well. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what, the whole weekend, my ass is gonna be in a fucking water. No. Mm -hmm. I love you. Did I do good? <laughs> Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. And that's what he can come up with there because um, he's like, now I feel bad. Um, and she's like, why? Why? He's like, um, my ass is going to be in the water all weekend. In other words, he's like, because I didn't buy you anything. <laughs> because he didn't get her anything for her anniversary because he wants her gone. You know that he cannot stand her even being in the same state as her at this point right so consider that and consider how much she put down on him and i'm just going to show you a little something this is another uh, masterpiece that penelope is lane made so penelope made this gem um and it's the truth about michelle sabati's jail phone call with her son um and it says michelle's threat to ip2 i'm not sure what that is but um she says some very interesting and enlightened thing mean things about um her son and let's see if I can get this in here um, so you can see and kind of see how she treats um, and values those in her life. So let's see what this, let's see what we, let's just hop on in here and see what we can do here. And I am using Penelope's Lane's um, channel so that it, you can go there. Hopefully I drive traffic to her so you guys can see her work and her amazing work. And hopefully she will not be too mad and will not strike me for using this. And I am trying to use this under a fair use to expose this. Bill. I like from the Orleans Parish Prison to accept charges plus more. Oh, this is a free call. To accept this call plus more. Okay, so she had not heard from her son for a while. And um, so she gets this call from the New Orleans prison. One. Bitch, you called the wrong motherfucking person this time. That's what she said. So her son makes his phone call. And that is what she did. That's how she answered him. Instead of saying, are you all right? What's going on? She said, bitch. Let me, let me go back a little bit so you can hear it. I'd like to remind everyone how Michelle really feels about her son, and we'll let Michelle tell us. Go ahead, Michelle. But of course, my stupid son, Mom. I am so happy that he's in jail now because I was paying somebody $50 a week just to make sure he was alive. Oh, that's right. I God, I'm glad I backed up because that's what I wanted you to hear. She was paying $50 to somebody a week just to make sure that her son was alive. $50 a week. Can you imagine that? And that's just so out of her budget because look, what'd she do? 
drop seven to ten K on uh Hubby. See, she made sure that his hotel airfare, rental car, dive certificate, license was up to date, um, a new camera, just I, I can't even imagine how much that camera cost, um, the accessories for it, just everything you could even ever even imagine. Six dives with two tanks, uh a, a dive. So I, I mean, honestly, four days, three nights. What do you think? Seven thousand? Ten thousand? Now, this is about her son, and, and she's glad that he's in prison because she was having to pay 50 bucks a, a week to somebody just to go and make sure that he was alive. So she was paying one of the little gangbanger friends of hers, of her, her and her sons, because she was she was Mama Sita to them. She she had all of his gangbangers, you know, come to her when they needed help, and she'd go in and walk in, and they'd have their guns and everything, and oh, she was Mama Sita, and she'd go and talk tough to them, and oh, yes, right? So she was paying $50 a week to somebody to make sure her son was alive. So she's glad he's in prison. Okay. Because like I say, look at how much she gave to him. She only wants a man. That is why all of these good people on YouTube who have been giving her all this money. Now that she's putting out this, the thing that she needs to be taken care of. She needs to be taken care of because she wants to be to take care of her. She wants a freaking dick. She wants a penis. She wants a man. So all of these women are saying they'll come and help her. And she she accuses them of probably what she would do. She, she'll she say, oh, okay, yeah, you can come over. And can you go ahead and give me a cash app, though, you know, for like right now just to hold me over. Because, you know, I need I need um to go pick my prescriptions up. And they're like, oh, sure, Michelle. And then they'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to come and stay with you, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll help. Uh-huh. And then she gets off the phone and then she tells people that she doesn't want that person to come because they would probably take um, pictures of her while she's sleeping and go through her papers. Well, who would do that if they're coming out to honestly help her and everything? So she's like insulting people who were offering to help her because that's what she does. But while well, she's trying to go and get the man that she's after right now, do you think she'd accuse him of any of those things? No, and I'm hearing quite a bit about this man because I wanted to see if he needed to be warned about her, but it seems like um, they might just be a great couple. Anyway, she is having those same people who are feeling sorry for her now send her son money on his commissary when she was glad that he was in prison so she wouldn't even have to be paying that 50 bucks a week to make sure that he's even alive. Now let's see. Let's see um how much she cares about now she now she's having other people. I saw, you know, this one lady who's seems to be a very nice person put 70 bucks on his on his account and I think she was fighting cuz she wanted 100 on or whatever. She's having people put money for her son who's incarcerated, not for the first time, probably not for the last time and probably for a long time. This is what, just just listen. I said some horrible shit to him when he went in, because he called me when he went to jail this time. He's like, you have a collab call from Joseph. Right? I'm like, from the Orleans Parish Prison. Right. To accept charges, plus right. one. Oh, this is a free call. Right. To accept this call, plus one. Right. Bitch, you called the wrong motherfucking person this time. It's exactly what I told him. You called the wrong mom. fucking person this time. You told me to fuck off long enough. By the way, AT and I are going through a divorce. By the way, we're going through a divorce, you fucking piece of shit, because you've done this. You've done Oh, now she's going to blame her son for the divorce. But he's an adult that she couldn't even be sure was alive. She's now putting this burden on her son that she's getting a divorce. Mother of the fucking year here. Done this. Thank you. Thank you for sticking up for you over and over and over. You've done this. Thank you. Thank you. Right? And then I'm like, you called the wrong person. You wasted your free call. You know, you dumbass, you know that they don't have the free call anymore. You don't have the one free call where, you know, you're going and, and the deputy comes and picks you up and puts you on the back of the horse and, and you go in and the operator, you know, pecks in this one call. And if, if the person doesn't, you know, 
answer, then that's it. You don't have a call and you can never make another call. You idiot. You know better. You know better. You know better. You know better. Right? 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 Call me like four or five days later. Mom, I'm on suicide watch. Yeah, sure you are. You just won't go, don't want to go in general population right now. You just don't want to go in general population right now, right? Okay, let's listen to what she's going to say now. So her son is on suicide watch. Her son has told people that he is contemplating suicide. Um, some people do that so that they are put in a different area. They're um, put with less uh, other inmates from what I understand. Um, I don't exactly know how that works because I've not been, um, in that type of a position, I will say. Um, I, d I don't know how that works with long-term, but, um, anyway. So, Ray, if Ray. you have no means to do this, then why don't you rip your <clears throat> off and shove it down your, <clears throat> Ray? Ray? Yep, folks, that's what she said. She told her son to stop acting like, basically to stop acting like a pussy, acting like he's suicidal just because he doesn't want to go and gen pop and have to do what he has to do. So why doesn't he just be a man and rip off his mm, and put it down his throat mm, so that he doesn't have to have that? Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's just repeat that for those in the back. Didn't hear that and still want to give this piece of shit money. We're sticking up for you over and over and over. You've done this. Thank you. Thank you. Who did what? Right. Right. And then. Who, no. What, 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 right. 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 Who did what? Who He caused your divorce. I don't see that it was your son over there throwing cement in Etienne's hair. I don't think that your son spent any time in that home at all. I don't see that um, anybody was there ruining that marriage except for you. I think that your children... All of your children have been taken from you. You don't have any rights to any of them. And that child was an adult. So how is he ruining your marriage with ETN? Hmm? But anyway, one more time. I'm like, you called the wrong person. You wasted your free call. You called me like four or five days later. Mom, I'm on suicide watch. Yeah, sure you are. You just won't go, don't want to go in general population right now. You just don't want to go in general population right now, right? So, Ray, right. if you have no means to do this, then why don't you rip your <clears throat> off and shove it down your... <clears throat> right? Right. 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 I can't believe you said that to me. Yeah, okay. Okay. I just said it. Michelle, if you ever question if you're a good mom, here's your answer. No, absolutely not. You told your son when he called you after being arrested that you were happy he's in jail because you get to save $50 a week. Then you told him he was a fucking piece of shit and you blamed your divorce on him, which we all know why you got divorced. You told him he wasted his free phone call. And then, Michelle, when he called you to tell you that he was on suicide watch, you first called him a liar, and then you told him to rip his penis off, shove it down his throat, and choke on it. What the fuck is wrong with you? And since no one in your life, Michelle, has... And here, and, and that's the truth. So now, when... She's not getting quite enough sympathy. She is now having other people feel like they need to give money and put it on her son's commissary. Um, now, she goes on to say that her son has done some pretty terrible things and she did not want to support him in jail because she wanted him to be in jail because he was a danger to society and could hurt somebody else's child so basically she flipped flipped the script on people and was like well do you want do you want my son to go and hurt your son and or hurt your family no he needs to be in there and that's why i talked to him because he needs to learn a lesson all this stuff so she twists it around but now that she is uh under fire because people are seeing that she's a big huge liar and she's getting deplatformed 
Then it's turning into, oh, since I don't have any money since I was in the hospital and I didn't go get to go and work, um, can somebody help and give money to my son in jail in the comments? What kind of a world is this okay? Why are people so caught up in this shit storm? Okay. And here's the thing. As one could argue that, you know what, I'm being part of a problem because I'm talking about her right now and and we're trying to get rid of her. Well, okay, we could say that, but what I am actually doing is being a part of the solution because right now she still has so many enablers that although YouTube took her channel down, she goes and starts a new one. She goes and starts a new one. She goes and starts a new one. She will fire one up as fast as they take it down. And she has this group of people who want to protect her and don't want anybody to know what that channel is. And because they're giving her money, they're enabling her, they're loving her. And then she'll go mouth off like she she can't help herself. She'll go mouthing off on and go on somebody else's panel because ultimately she wants this man to help her. And so then people find out her channel and they report it. Now she blames one person for reporting her and focuses all on this one person, I think named Jenny. Who So she's like, oh, oh, Jenny did this, Jenny did that. Well, it takes more people than that and a lot more people are complaining. YouTube needs to put it on here that she cannot be on a channel. She cannot be on anybody else's platform, period. She's done. She is setting up so many dangerous scenarios for people and has been doing by her breaking the terms of service by she openly does drugs. She openly threatens. She is not what any platform should have because she's a liability. She breaks the terms of service every single day. I had my channel taken down for no reason whatsoever and I was so scared, you know, I cried. I felt like all my work, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't backed up my things. I did, I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong. So I didn't know about backing up anything or anything. So I thought, oh my God, you know, my 500 subscribers, I worked really hard to get. And I think I had at that time, probably 50 videos. I don't know. Um, but it was just, I had worked hard for that. And it was simply because I made one comment um, on when the tragedy pimps were in front of a house and many channels who um, I found out many channels who were commenting there all had their channels struck at that time. So I didn't know. I was just scared. I thought, you know, YouTube was serious because it said you, it says you cannot, you know, that you're done. Thank you for playing. Don't ever come back. Do not start a new channel. You're permabanned. So for me, it was very upsetting. I went through the process. I showed that I was not doing anything. They went, they reviewed my videos. It took about 72 hours and they said, you know, I had not done anything. They were sorry for the inconvenience. Have a good day. That's because I follow the rules. The people who are not following the rules need to not be on YouTube. YouTube is a collective community of people who are showing news stories. There are um, areas where it's just people talking back and forth with each other, um, gaming, etc, etc. It's an entertainment forum for people who are like mind. So when I want to look further into a topic, I go and I find a channel who is speaking in the same way that I see things. And I interact with them, I go and I learn and I go back and forth. And I go and I source out, I go and get um, legal documents and um, information and research and research. And then I go back and I find, you know, how other creators are interacting and, you know, and then I create my own stories and my own take and, and put all that information together. And that's how I believe it's meant to be. Um, these people who are on there to exploit, manipulate, get money so that they can use drugs on on the channel in front of everybody need to go they are a distraction they are they're a menace um youtube needs to stand up and if it takes me putting this up here because i'm not making any money on this and showing so that people can go to the root of the problem and hear and see what she's doing to finally get it through their heads to not enable her to realize that her family her ex-husband Everybody 
that has been involved in her life for the past 30 years has tried to get her to stop her bullshit. And they boxed her in by blocking. They're not giving her anything. They want her to be stopped so that she will go and look inwards and get the help that she needs so that she can be somewhat of a person, however she can, in in the capabilities that she can at some point for her living children. Now, being as she lost one baby to SIDS, do you think that she would ever take for granted the life of her surviving child and talk to him this way? She has a beautiful teenage daughter who is being raised beautifully by um, her father, and nobody needs to look into that. That's all done. She's she's doing great. She's healthy. She's happy. She has nothing to do with Michelle. Um, now let's listen to some more ever held you accountable for your actions. Yep. No one's ever told you accountable because they don't want to stick around long enough. They'd rather just get the hell out of there and away from you. I've taken it upon myself to try to hold you accountable and let you see what a miserable, vile human you are. So I proceeded after you said those horrible things about your son to make a video calling you out. And I told you, you didn't deserve any children. And instead of getting mad about me for talking about your son, which is what you claimed you were doing, you got mad at me because I embarrassed you and called you a bad mom. So you tried to fight me. And we all know anytime I can use this clip, I will. So enjoy Roundhouse Kick Girl. Bitch, grow some motherfucking balls. I will give you... I will give you my fucking address, you bitch. Let's super chat it. Let's super chat it. Let's super chat it and split the fucking proceeds, bitch. You want to hit me? I will fuck you up. You want to punch me? I'm a puncher. You want to threaten me? Go. (laughs) (laughs) It needs like one of those SpongeBob things. Three hours later. Yeah, um, another violation of um, terms of service. Um, She's very, very angry at um, Penelope exposing the truth because up to that point, she was getting away with all of these lies. But um, Penelope kicked her ass five ways from sideways by just simply showing the truth. And that is what the truth can do. In all of its glory, the truth has that power. The truth should always weigh more. The truth should have that kind of power that it can, um, expose liars. That's why people despise the truth. People like her despise the truth. What are you talking about? So first of all, no, thank you to growing the balls. I'm quite happy without testicles. Uh, second, I already have your address, so no need to dox yourself. But third, what? You you want us to do super chats? I don't even know what that means. I've had enough. This Penelope girl, she's a little pussy. I'm so mad at you. I want to punch you in the face. Bitch, grow some fucking balls. Grow some balls. My address has been doxxed. I don't know where the fuck you live because you're a little pussy, right? You're a little pussy. I will pay your round trip ticket to come to my house. You want to punch me in the face? Let's meet up. Let's do a little meet up. You know, I'm, I've got enough things to be monetized. I'm going to be monetized soon. Bitch, let's do a little pay-per-view. Let's do super chat, super chat. Let's See, super it's chat. all about money. It's all about money. And she was thinking she was going to get monetized and everything. There's no way. There is no way she would ever get monetized. Um, she breaks terms of service every freaking time she peers she um doing drugs and drinking and showing pew pews on the counter are all violations as is threatening people um it's not like she can just sit there and hold a conversation or interact so she resorts to these things i'm five five and three quarters i'm a bucko seven you want to punch me in the face let's go Let's go. Oh, you've got a punchable face too, man. Oh, you said you were tired. (laughs) That'd be tough to put to turn down. Oh, that'd be tough to turn down. 
Michelle, I know you want to see harm come to me, so I'm going to tell you a quick little story. Today when I was at the gym, again, you know, us peasants have to go with the other peasants and work out. Um, I was listening to this, and I was uh, doing some incline walking on the treadmill, working on that booty. I can give you a workout if you're interested. Um, anyway, so I was doing that, and then this came about in your video, and I burst out laughing, nearly tripped, dropped my water, and made a scene. So you did embarrass me, Michelle, today. Happy? Um, but let's talk about a couple things. <laughs> what the fuck? First of all, Michelle, I would never go anywhere with you. Never come to your home. Uh, so no thank you. I'm not going to come to you, not even if you buy me a first class ticket. Uh, secondly, oh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to pay-per-view it? What? <laughs> what are we pay-per-viewing? Um... And you are super chatting. I'm also not sure how your almost monetization has anything to do with that either. Um, the only two things I can think of is that we're going to actually fight on a live stream while you ask for super chats. Again, no thank you. Um, I also don't understand why you said you lost your job and retired. I don't understand that. That has to do with anything of it. Um, I would like to point out that yesterday, Michelle, you called me a big vagina. Today, I'm a small vagina. If you have to choose, I'd like to be the small vagina, please. I am also don't understand what me being a little vagina has to do with you finding out where I live. That confuses me. I guess I really didn't go to college, huh? You want to punch me? I'm a puncher. You want to threaten me? Oh. Go for it. Oh, that's Come tempting. Punch me. Come punch me, because I got to get, like, I broke my nose already, so if you think you're going to do some damage, you think you do some damage to my face, one, you can't. One, you <laughs> oh, look at her. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, putting them fists up. Putting them fists up. And, it, I mean, are you guys old enough? Remember what Groucho Marx looks like? Well, if not, you were going to Google. You don't need to. That's what Groucho Marx looks like. And they used to have like these little Groucho Marx disguises. And you'd get these glasses and a nose. And that's exactly it. So look at her up there. Right there. You're squaring up, man. Love you to catch my hands, bitch. You can't. Because I'm a retired stunt double. Do you know what a roundhouse kick feels like? Oh, here she goes. She's talking about it because she was a stunt double. I don't know if they were like... If she came up to the set once and they were like, um, how about if we run you over three times? Would you just like sit there and shut up and do that? And she's like, yeah, I got some street cred from that. Right? 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 The face? Do you know what a roundhouse kick feels in the face? I bet you don't. Nope. I bet you don't. Nope. That's my nickname. Roundhouse kick girl. Sure. Right? Right? I'm sick of your shit. So she's, um... <laughs> <laughs> St. Penelope is she makes these masterpieces and she puts these things in and <laughs> you know, and, and Michelle says that she's foot five foot three and three quarters and a buck seven and she's known as roundhouse kick girl well um and she's saying that she can roundhouse kick at people and fists and she wants uh, Penelope to go there and um, square up with her, but this is all post stroke. Um, isn't she supposed to have service dogs and full disability and everything because she cannot um, square up and roundhouse kick? Isn't it funny how able bodied she is to, you know, be tough? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Uh, roundhouse Kick Girl. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I might not tell anyone else that. That's pretty embarrassing. Um, one, because it's a super weird nickname. Uh, but also, you're not a retired stunt double. Michelle, I have all of the proof of this. I will make a video for you. And the other lie you told, Michelle, your nose is not broken. I'm sure the doctors told you that. I know you said you were getting a CAT scan. and then in Is that... <laughs> okay have you ever heard of oh my my covid brain is in over
five. Um, help Helen smash is who that is. Let me get her real name. Let me see here. Help. Smash. Okay. If you ever want some hilarious freaking videos, go and look up um, Help Helen Smash, okay? It's from this comedian named Laura Clary, L-A-U-R-A-C-L-E-R-Y. That is her, I believe, in this right there. Um, she's just gorgeous. And she married this man named Stephen Hilton, not of that Hilton but um Steven and her were um <laughs> making these skits in the beginning. Now they went on, got married, and have two kids, and he is not doing well. He had to leave the marriage. Um, he almost unalived himself. They need a lot of support. Um, so number one, go back and look at their funny videos, give them support in that way, and then um Try to watch them and, and see see what you can, especially if you have a child with autism, um, watching Laura Clary is going to be the best gift you could give yourself because um, she has, you know, all of the money and resources at her hands in California. And the way that she has went through her autism journey with her son, she did not notice that her son had autism. People who were watching Alfie, her son, um, as she was doing lives, were commenting on him having autism. And she's like, my kid doesn't have autism. And um, so through her journey, you know, and, and he really regressed with his talking and whatnot. And she just took it on as this full-time job to figure out how to reconnect with him. And um, she's just funny with her, um, the way she'll, she'll, she'll dance around, she'll sing with him, she'll flap around, she'll, if he starts flapping and needing to stim in the middle of the grocery store, she'll start flapping and stimming with him. And it's just great to see her do that. So just another little way that Penelope's Lane keeps giving us these, these uh, little ways in which I can tell you guys other things that you can find out too. So thanks Penelope for all that you do and the ways that you keep giving. And here we go. MRI for your broken nose. If you want to tell the doctors that maybe an x-ray might be best. Um, I don't know. But Michelle, I really... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling me your nickname. <laughs> Roundhouse <laughs> Kick Girl, right? Roundhouse right? Kick Girl, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I, right? I swear that's never gonna get old, Michelle. Right? I really like that nickname. Um, but let's go ahead and show you doubling down, proving to everyone that you are in fact the worst mom ever. Here was your response to my video calling you out about what you said about your son. You claim that because I made that video, you had to go ahead and exploit your son and say a bunch more terrible things about him, Michelle. So again, here's how you really feel about your son. Exposing my kid, it's okay. I'm gonna expose him because he needs to be exposed. He needs to be exposed because Penelope told me I don't deserve to be a mother and I'm a piece of shit because I feel the way I do about him. He sold his soul to the streets. He's not my son anymore. Y'all watch the Dahmer videos. Y'all watch all these serial killer videos, right? My son is not my son anymore. He has turned into a demon. And I'm saying this about my kid because people... She just called her son a demon. And she wants everybody to think that she is this poor woman who lost her child to SIDS. And because she lost a child to SIDS, she just went batshit crazy. Mm. People turn into bad people. People turn into evil people. Do you think Dahmer's people are sticking up for him? Do you think Charles... She's comparing her son to Jeffrey Dahmer. She compared him to a demon because he's given his life to the streets.
Charles Manson's people, family were sticking up for him. My son has turned into an evil person. And Michelle, since I'm the only person that seems to tell you the truth in your life, I'm going to tell you this. Yes, actually, Dahmer's people did support him. They realized what he did wasn't great. It was bad. He deserved to be in prison, but, you know, they visit him every week, Michelle. It's more than you've done for your son. But let's go ahead and watch just how you not only exploit your son on your own channel, you proceed to go on other channels and exploit him. And talk about his penis, Michelle. Why are you always talking about your son's penis? His veins are so shot, he has to, get, he has to like, inject in his penis. You, you never know. He could end up being, like, somebody who completely changes his life around, like, gets clean and, and like, is able to help people and really, you know, be, you know, um, people could see him and see how he was. So, Michelle, the most disgusting part about that... Yep, so people were playing into it, and they were like, you know... He needs help and you need help and maybe together you guys could get help and and how can we help? And she's like, no, he's a piece of shit. You know, and, and this is, again, I, I don't know um, where I can find the clip of the disgusting things that she said about her child that um, passed away of Sid's grave. Um, but when she would uh, get mad, she'd start talking about um, the child's grave and what she thinks people should go do on top of the grave etc cetera, etc cetera. so she baits that so that then anybody who gets in a fight with her she goes so low that it she provokes them so then they'll repeat what she said about her own child and then people will think that the other person is a piece of crap for doing that and they will cut that other person's mic off if she's on a, a panel. And so she'll be left, and that's how she wins the arguments. This is how she abused her husband. This is how she took a a big strapping man who was in the military and broke him down into nothing so that he couldn't even make eye contact with anybody by the time she was done with him. He looked down, dejected, depressed, his whole posture, everything. She she had the capability to do that to a military man. Clip is not that you're talking about your son's penis again or the fact that you know your son uses the veins in his penis to inject intravenous drugs. Oh no, my. that's not the most disgusting part, Michelle. The most disgusting part is that you're annoyed that Ziggy is giving your son sympathy. Do you see your face? You roll your eyes and all you can think of is your next statement you're going to make to bring it back to focus on Michelle. Yep. So now that we've taken a trip down memory lane and let you tell us how you really feel about your son, Michelle, we're going to go to the day before he called you and you streamed him on his live. And we're going to point out all of the times you let us know that you, in fact, spent an hour on the phone with your son the day before you streamed his call, basically to make sure he'd say everything you wanted him to and make him defend you on the internet to strangers. All the while, Michelle, knowing what you've said about him to all your viewers, the horrible, terrible things you've said about your own child, you manipulated him into sticking up for you by making him feel bad, telling him that, People are being mean to me on the internet for no reason, which is bullshit, Michelle. You know the reason. You're a complete asshole on YouTube. You manipulate and lie to everyone. You've literally never said one true thing. And everyone keeps proving you're lying and you still keep going on. And then you lie to your son and you tell him, they're just picking on me and saying that I don't love you. No, Michelle, you said you don't love him. That's why we're saying that. Oh. And, and... Penelope needs to take a freaking bow, okay? Look at what she did. She did this. She did this. I, I don't, I can't see right here. Um, when she put these videos up, I believe, you know, before Christmas, definitely. Um, so I guess that's my big lesson here is that people need to look into who they're giving money to, who they're starting to believe their sob story to. Because the truth was already out here. I doubt that anybody 
in this economy and otherwise just has so much money laying around that they want to fund a drug addict. Why? If if somebody is giving money because they think this person needs help, you're helping them to get closer to their grave. What they're doing with that money is putting drugs into their body, which one drug too many is going to put them in the grave. So while people are thinking they are helping her, they are hurting her. I don't know what her end game is right now with trying to get people to put money on her son's commissary other than thinking that there is some way in which she is trying to make her son give that money back to her or she's going to use it against him later to get money back out. But this is just sick. When you are in jail, the food isn't supposed to be good, okay? It is there to teach you a lesson so that you think every single meal, you think every single day, you think every single time you want this and that, That you know what, you don't have the right to that freedom because you did this. And it's to get you to think about things so that you can be accountable and go and change yourself and not get in jail ever again. And before we take a listen to your plan the day before the streaming jail call, uh, you're high as fuck, Michelle. What the shit? You seriously need to be careful. Right. And this is going to call me from jail. And what you're going to hear is, this is a collect call from Securus from Joseph. Great. And I'm going to accept this collect call. And Joseph is going to tell his story. My son from jail. How do you like that? So fucking proud. My son is going to completely tell his story from jail. Wow. I like that. I like that. Mm, Joe, like these people are like, Joe hates you. Are you high or just incredibly stupid? And then you get a little view here of her picking her nose because when she gets too far down um, and tired, she starts nodding off and picking her nose and stuff and then people start making fun of it and she's like no it's because I got my nose broken and yeah it's it's because of the stroke and the nose breaking and everything and so I just have to sit there and pick because there's these hard things up there and and then she just starts picking her nose and picking her nose it's disgusting absolutely disgusting so with that I am going to close out I just wanted to show you how she um how she will uh put a man on a pedestal and not think twice about spending all of his money to that point, you know, or if it is part of her disability money and, and there's no cost that is spared. There's nothing that isn't thought of when it's planning for a man, but for her own son. Now I believe that she birthed three children. The one died of SIDS. Unfortunately, the daughter is with her father and this one, I don't think has the same father as the daughter. Um, and he has has been in and out. And, and the thing is, is that when she did have him on the call, he is very kind. He is very, very kind to Michelle. Anything that Michelle says about what a piece of shit mom she is and stuff, he's like, no, don't do that. He's very insightful. So he does have the ability to turn his life around because he has the ability, it seemed at least in a phone call, to be insightful and reflective. Those that do not, like her, have the ability to be insightful and reflective um, really don't have a a great chance um, in getting better. The borderline personality and addiction is just a managed, managed lifetime commitment. So if people want to help, they need to stop. They need to stop enabling her. They need to stop giving money. And they need to see that um, her son wasn't even worth 50 bucks a week just to see if he was still alive. So, yeah, with that, I will let you go. Um, It's Thursday. It's uh, going into the weekend. Um, I hope that you all have a good weekend. 
Um, maybe you're in an area where you're actually starting to get um, spring that's supposed to be there and you're going to start some gardening or something like that. Um, I'd like to hear. I, I like to hear what people are doing. Let me know. Let me know. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or otherwise, let me know. Otherwise, please go and watch the whole um, series of videos that Penelope did. And um, tell her you want her back. Come back, Penelope. Also, Charlotte on the web is doing a good job of getting um, at the information about Michelle out. Um, Heels in the Air has always done a great job. Um, let me see. Heels in the Air. And Charlotte on the web. Um, and New Jersey Courts.com. So NJ Courts. It's NJ Quartz TV. Let me check. They're doing a good job of getting the truth and the facts out there too. Okay, it's um just NJ Quartz, just like that. Um, I had some questions about the guy that um, Michelle's trying to um, seduce and get to move in with her, basically. And um, really couldn't find the backstory. Like I say, I I try to I try to not believe what somebody says about somebody because I know that there's people who generally have um, a reason for why they're saying that about somebody, and I I want to give the person the ability to explain themselves um, before I I form an opinion on them. But I was not able to do that because with that creator you have to. Um, pay money to ask a question to have it answered. Um, there's just no way to write in a question. Sometimes it's only members and members have to do that. So um, I started looking and um, NJ Quartz has uh, quite a lot of information um, on a lot of people and they come through with receipts too. So check out NJ Quartz. Um, Heels in the air. And... Mich Penelope's Lane. Um, thanks again for always being such a good, good community to me. Um, I love, you know, in the beginning, I, as I was covering Watts so much, I was, you know, able to say, you know, no twats allowed. I mean, no Watts with a T allowed. But um, you guys have just been amazing to me. So I don't even have to like do my disclaimer anymore. Like no twats allowed because you guys are just so amazing. So um, thank you for your time. And I hope that I gave back in in the ways of teaching you something or um, giving you a little bit of food for thought. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I will look forward to speaking with you again soon. Bye-bye.